Yeah, Luke was over there like, they didn't show me enough campaign footage, and I'm not I interested in multiplayer. Like I... The more I think about it, I, I think I actually really agree with you, Brett. What is it? On what I hope you're about to no, say. No, you, you, you tell IP me. Is, IP is king. Yeah, oh. IP is king. Yeah. Oh, All the grenades. got heat wave and camo probably. No, I use... I think I can't. I use camo. I use camo. Strong. What? It's good. I, I hadn't taken a test. <laughs> I hadn't taken a test sip yet. Uh, trailer, trailer roundup. T and Luke's gonna play with more cars. <laughs> vroom, vroom. The shot of the like creepy old lady during the elevator bit got me very excited. Dude, Mitchell's vs. the Machines is awesome. And I'm like, what even is this movie? How have I not heard about this? Um, I also want to give a shout out this week to my, my wife, my wife, who got me this awesome A24 book. Make it rated R and release it on Hulu. The next do it, yeah. do it, you cowards! Does, does I'm, Luke, I'm does not Luke want to burn the books. That's the real question. I'm not anti-book, but I just—it's really hard for me to read books. Dude, you can ask like, me to change my expectations moments before the movie begins. We do it for every movie. I we say, yeah. what if it sucks? <laughs> is up fanboys and fangirls welcome back to another episode of the what the fanboy show hey <laughs> yep. is that batman that's batman. that's batman well we'll talk about batman here in a little bit we'll talk about dc here in a little bit um there's some fun dc related things happening um but yeah uh today it's just luke and i on the couch how you doing i'm doing good i'm a little sleepy Ah, well, you you can lay down and take a nap. That's what it, no, 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 no. We got a podcast. We got a podcast. Too. You're right. You're right. I'll My probably bad. wake up. I don't know what what direction I'm gonna go in. If I'm gonna go with spicy takes or based takes, <laughs> you know, we're gonna find out. All right, let's, it'll be an interesting day. Sounds good. Tyler isn't here to calm me down. Oh, and I'm just gonna stir the pot. So. so. Oh boy. <laughs> Maybe I should lean more based then. No, it'll be fine. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? A lot, um a lot. a lot, a lot. That's fair. Something always goes wrong when it's just <laughs> two just the two of here. us or yeah, just two of us in general. Um okay, well, before we get into some of our reviews and some news, um what kind of movie, TV, game trailers outside of Nintendo Direct uh that we have do we have to talk about today? Um, we got another Penguin uh, teaser trailer. It's actually labeled Official Teaser 2, which Ooh. I think is hilarious. <laughs> Official Teaser 2. Um, I think they also revealed when it's coming out. I don't remember when, though. So now I'll look it up. Um, this show looks awesome, though. Absolutely. This is the... Uh, what 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 I would have expected from like an HBO level um, superhero show, you know, I mm -hmm. think for a long time we had things like the CW shows, and <laughs> we've had you know Marvel stuff on Disney Plus, and those have their own style, <laughs> bar quality, right, quality, quality bar. bar, and I think. When I hear Matt Reeves, you know, it's it's a Batman in the universe of the Batman starring these Academy Award winning or nominated <laughs> actors. Um, Dude, we got to get Colin to win. We do got to get Colin to win. Uh, yeah, it just, it raises that bar up and right now, super hyped for this. Yeah, it it looks awesome. It, it does feel like it's kind of setting a new bar of superhero I mean, I feel like DC has had a pretty high bar. They also have a very low bar. Let's not <laughs> gloss over that. There's been a lot of garbage from the DC side. But like just recently, we've had Peacemaker, yeah. which was awesome. Yeah. Um, obviously, there was Lindelof's Watchmen show, which was fantastic. Yeah. Um, 
but this is so much more traditional characters yeah almost yeah. Like it's in the <laughs> batman universe um i know we had gotham already but this trailer was better than all of gotham already <laughs> that show had such a great pilot and then it just fell Whee! off the deep end in my opinion it was so weird <laughs> but um yeah the show is looking great i'll never get over the fact that that's colin farrell with all that makeup on dude it looks so good if he didn't have i mean it those... looks so gross but also so good <laughs> if he didn't have those eyebrows i don't think i would recognize him yeah but i have to look at his eyebrows to be like yes that's colin farrell yeah um september yep. is when it releases um not that's, that far away. That's a lot sooner than, like, it seems. Mm -hmm. Like, in my head, it's like, oh, yeah, it's summer or whatever. September is still summer. <laughs> yeah, technically, right? For a, a bit. It's crazy. For three weeks. Um, but yeah, this this is looking really, 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 really good. Agreed. And the cast is awesome, too. I I said this in our little group chat, and I don't know if it will happen, I'm leaning towards it won't happen because it'd probably be expensive. But I still am just hoping that there's an episode where there's some like drug deal mm -hmm. or you know criminal activity going down in the Narrows or something. It's like, oh yeah, we got to do this deal. So, oh, what's going on? Where? Hey, where'd Jeff go? Yeah. And then just like almost like kind of reminiscent of you know Batman Begins and Matt Reeves of Batman, where just batman's there yeah and you have no idea where he's at it like, would be super fascinating to see that from the other you know we're used to seeing it from batman's yeah. vantage you see the just... stalker but like let's let's get the prey perspective yeah like and they just you don't even ever have to show him yeah just like you know we you all don't have to bring robert pattinson in we just got... have have him have their the stunt actors do his, their thing yeah be that version of the batman you know, pop in, pop out. You barely see him, and then he's gone. If they all get caught, but you feel the effect of it. Yeah, cops show up and get him. Yeah, penguin can get away if he had needs to. You know, right. he's the main character or whatever. But oh, it'd be so cool. It'd be a dream come true. <laughs> That'd be so awesome. But yeah, can't wait for the show. Um, we got another Batman teaser. Um, this is like on the opposite side though. Um, this is for the Batman C Caped Crusader animated show that's going to prime <laughs> that still feels weird For some yeah. reason um hbo was like no 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 we have we enough <laughs> batman which um, I imagine, is insane i imagine amazon played um paid a pretty good price for it though yeah um but it was a pretty simple trailer they kind of show off some of the city background animation that will mm -hmm. happen and it's just a list of all the voice cast, and it's uh, it's stacked, man. And the big reveals at the end that um, what what's his name? Hamish Shad Linkler. Hamish Linklater. Linklater, yeah. Linklater, um, who I know mainly as the priest in Midnight Mass. Yeah. Um, he's gonna be the voice of Batman, and <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm really excited for this show too. And it's like it's 40s aesthetic, is super cool. It's going to be a lot different than a lot of things that we've gotten before, so I'm very, very excited for that, too. Yeah, this was a cool little tease. I'm excited to see a trailer and see really that aesthetic in motion. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it was a good good little tease. Yep. And, yeah, like you said, stack cast. It, it McKenna is... Grace is in there. Uh, Mini Driver. Dietrich John Bader. DiMaggio. Dietrich Bate, yeah, he was a and voice, he's, and he's played Batman, Batman be before. Before, yeah, yeah. When I'm sleepy and I'm getting ready for bed, I'll throw on Batman: Brave and the Bold, and he's the voice in that. That is a very different show. <laughs> it's a lot of fun though. Um, and then if we if I'm if we're missing a trailer, please let us know. I only have one movie trailer, uh, and it came out today. Um, that's Nosferatu. Yeah, this looks like a bloody good time. This, it, you know what? I'm I'm the vampire <laughs> hater, I'm the zombie hater. 
all those like classic monsters that nobody can get right i hate it mm-hmm. you know what i'm on board with this one yeah that's what i like to hear it's eggers uh he's good at what he's doing i've seen two of his movies and they're both awesome um but that being said like if you saw this and you didn't go see the Northmen, it's like, come on, man. <laughs> you have to watch. I feel like you just have to watch it first. Be like, you like to pay your dues. Yeah. It's like, you didn't support him the first time <laughs> or the second time or the third time. So you can't see this until you see the other stuff. But uh, I I should watch The Witch. I need to get on that. I have a, f- I, I'm very curious to see. This feels like a culmination of what he and obviously it's a trailer so we're only seeing clips mm-hmm. so it'll be interesting to see you know how some of those longer takes from the northmen you know if he incorporates yeah some of that that slower more uh i don't know grindy uh pace um i will i'm you know i'd put big money on that yeah but I feel like even the lighthouse had that. There, yeah, absolutely. But there's parts of the Northmen, specifically the stuff with like Willem Dafoe, who is also in this one, where it's chaotic and mm-hmm. almost animalistic or spiritualistic, and this feels like it's way more interested in talking about, you know, Nosferatu, aka the vampire, God. Dracula. Spoiler. No, oh, my bad. As right as that, like almost a spiritual force. Mm-hmm. Um, there, it it feels more like a almost a possession movie um, from some of the choices that they used mm. in the in the trailer. That yep. I could be way off on that, and it may just be a buzzy trailer to be a buzzy trailer. Yep. Uh, but yeah, super excited and ready to be scared. I just whoever <laughs> Eggers is um Eggers is um whoever his cinematographer is I love it. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Just doesn't like the lighthouse and the northmen were just so gorgeous to look at mm-hmm. the entire time. Yep. So maybe that's what convinced me. It's just like, "Man, this more, just looks so pretty." Cuz it like most I feel like a lot of vampire and you know like classic monster movies they don't typically look like this unless they're the really old ones but it's kind of harkening back to that as well yeah it, old it, school it feels yeah. old school with modern sensibilities mm-hmm. um yeah which is which is great which isn't new for him either he made a four by three black and white yeah 1940 he's, he's one of those really interesting directors who dives into not just like a complete fascination in history with whatever he's writing and directing about like the story like there's the whole thing with the northmen like the, he really got into that mythology mm-hmm. and you know shipbuilding and understanding what it meant to live in that time um but i feel like he's similarly with film and technique he's constantly looking at how do i make this movie feel you know a certain way um, so my guess is, yeah, he's going back to those, um, you know, early 1900s films and looking at how did they create these kinds of shadows. Oh, that's a really basic thing that most cinematographers and lighting people would know, right? But, like, really diving into, okay, how do I make this with using today's equipment with the image quality that we have because you, mm-hmm. you, you can't do some of that stuff the exact same way. Mm-hmm. You can't shine those lights um, and have it capture on a digital, and I'm assuming he's on digital and not film, but you're right, like, it captures differently on a digital sensor than it would on film. Mm-hmm. So And plus, even if it is film, it's not a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a different kind of... It's the, obviously a more modern film, and they're yeah. capturing at higher resolutions, which means your makeup has to be different. So mm-hmm. all of those things together, he just seems like the kind of director who really enjoys digging into that kind of stuff. It's probably the director that'd be like, you know what, can you just give me a camera for 1910? Yeah. <laughs> He probably let's just, let's would. Just it on that. Can we we'll just ADR do everything. It'll be fine. I'm really curious what Nosferatu will look like too. Yep, they do a good job of not showing. Obviously, like you see the 
image. I see the image all the time on Twitter of him because usually it's used comically. Yeah. Um. But like, how how will it compare that? Yeah, even we get... that like super old version of the character is still like super creepy. Yeah, very creepy. We um, get some like you know kind of like bare veiled shadow veiled shadows and and like a uh someone who's you know maybe either naked or or at least doesn't have a top like but like yeah. we see like their short like it's in a scars guard right so it's like that like gangly <laughs> shoulder which work scars guard and, uh it's bill isn't it the it clown yeah yeah it's bill 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 the gangly scars clown guard. i'm like 90 yeah yeah, he's gonna pull that off. He's gonna look so so creepy. <laughs> and the next one, which scars guard is he working with? He has yeah. He he's one scars guard per movie. Jumping around, <laughs> I love it. Uh, whichever one he hasn't worked with yet, I don't know. Yeah, but hey, he convinced me the vampire complainer to be interested in his movie. So love it, love to see it. All right, well, real quick, um, we don't have, like, a big main topic, but Luke and I both watched something something this week, so <laughs> we can kind of give some quick reviews uh, before we jump into news. I'll real quick talk about Inside Out 2. Um, huge movie. Uh, apparently saving the box office this year, according to the internet. Um, Until the next movie comes out and saves the box office. But yeah, yeah. Because that's the trend. It's and like, then oh, something ha- and then something will bomb and will doom the box office. And then... No, Furiosa already bombed. Because for some reason people didn't want to see a great action movie. Yeah. God, I, can't. <laughs> I don't understand. I'm s- I see every day the box office numbers for Furiosa mm-hmm. on Twitter because somebody posts it. I'm just like... What did the- everybody have a problem with this movie about? <laughs> what was... <laughs> why didn't we see it it was it was so good i'm sorry luke i need to watch it again i need to watch that in dune 2 again because obviously i kind of conflicted on what my number one movie i do need to see dune 2 again i haven't watched it yet but anyways inside out 2 um this is pixar's first sequel in a while um i say that let's just say this is their first movie in theaters in a while while. (laughs) yeah um and the, the the big obvious thing is you should send Pixar movies to theaters because they actually make money. You should just send movies <laughs> to theaters. You should. They make you should. Um, you can still put it on your streamer. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, look, this is like eight years after seven years, five, six. I don't know. Riley's 13. Um, she hits puberty. And has to deal with a bunch of new emotions um, and friends and what is growing up and dealing with that stuff like. Uh, It is incredibly well done. I think it's right up there next to the original Inside Out. Um, My, like, biggest complaints, if you can call them that, uh, would be that the stuff that's happening to like joy and uh, kind of the the older emotion the, the the original emotions from the first film it feels very their journey feels very similar to inside <laughs> out one it's like joy thinks she's in control and like she's accepted that like that means everyone on the team gets to be a part of Riley's life new emotions come up she doesn't know how to handle that uh they have to go to the back of the mind or they get sent to the back of the mind and they have to do a little mission to get back right and they learn and they learn things along the way have to find an imaginary they find an imaginary friend it's the video game crush character Uh, that one is that one is in there the bit the big one is not it's pouchy oh so it's an actual imaginary friend again there's a new bing bong no it's from a it's from a it's similar to the it's from a show like, it's not a real show. Like, a show in that universe. Paw Patrol version of their universe? Kind of, well, it's like the Door of the Explorer. It's like oh, it's okay. like the map. Or the backpack <laughs> or something. Right? Like, it's the... the Like, talk to the audience kind of a thing. So, like, this character is just 
randomly talking to no one. <laughs> but sometimes they'll put the camera so it's like it's actually talking to the movie theater audience, which is really funny. That's great. Super fun. Uh, really well written. Uh, voice acting was excellent. Um, they didn't bring back Bill Hader or Mindy Kaling, yeah. which I don't know why. Money. This, look, I mean, sure, but like, also you knew, surely you knew this movie was going to make enough money to pay them. <laughs> I, they're not, they're, I don't think that they are, to an average audience member, I wouldn't say that their new voice, the new voice casts there are so different that it's noticeable. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of one of those weird, like, I would have been cool if the, like, the whole original squad was back. Um, but it's fine. They got joy and sadness back. So. <laughs> uh, those are pro- – joy mainly is probably the most Oh, Amy Poehler is the, yeah, the most important one they have there. Um New emotion, the the big one is obviously anxiety. Um, that's the one featured in all of the trailers. There are a couple other ones. Um, boredom, uh, embarrassment, and envy. Uh, they all have minor, but pretty good roles. That's not an emotion. That's a deadly sin. <laughs> What's in the box? <laughs> My emotions. That's what's in the box. What's in the box? Um, I do like the change of pace in Riley's story this time. Uh, I think it's a I think kind of the first one, you know, was all about her, um, uh, feeling uncomfortable in a new place, not mm-hmm. feeling like she's being heard, uh, that like desire to like run away and like get back to what she knows. And this is way more personal. Um, you know, it's about, her and her two best friends and they're going to high school next year but something's something's gonna be different Mm -hmm. and you know part of what anxiety's role in the mind is to maybe like think about like it's it's okay to worry about things a little bit right (laughs) um but when that's all you're doing that's not healthy and uh obviously it can take over your mind it's it's a really beautiful film um it does a really good job of uh going into ex- expanding the mind beyond just memories and memory making but like they talk about how we form core beliefs and these beliefs become who we are and what happens when your core beliefs are completely removed and all of a sudden this anxiety is making new core beliefs for you um really really fascinating i loved it a lot uh teared up a couple times classic pixar man claire really enjoyed it did you like and kind of understand what was going on i you know we didn't have a real deep conversation afterwards about it we we kind of talked about you know what were your favorite parts um so i think it was still approachable enough for her but she is at that age now where she's making, you know, friends that are not just, hey, I, you know, met someone new in, at the, at preschool. Like, it's, we're, de- we're she's developing friends who, um, you know, stay with her year to year through school and, and things like that. So I think there's, part of that is, you know, transferable even to a, to an eight, nine year old, um, but yeah, but it's still very, very easily digestible for someone that age. So uh, I gave it a solid fanboy worthy. Um, really, really good. Definitely recommend it. Solid. Solid. Salad. Awesome. I can't wait to watch it. I don't know when I'll get out to see it. I might just be have to wait for it on Disney+. Plus. It depends how long it's actually in theaters. Yeah. Which is... Unfortunately, a conversation like now. I it's do like, oh, think... this movie's in theater for a week. This one's in theaters. For... Right. I Eight. think this will have legs over the summer. Yep. It's doing. It's done real. It only had a thirty-five percent drop uh, to its yeah. second weekend, which, which is, is crazy good, phenomenally good. Man. So it had a great first weekend. It had really good word of mouth, and a lot of people got out. 
um, it is kind of hitting all of the right things as we move into here in America, at least the Fourth of July weekend. Yeah. And you know, school's out for. School's out for summer. summer. <laughs> but yeah, I could see, I could see it coming uh, probably into theaters uh, around the time school starts. I got the kids are going back to school. Take it out. Get out Take it out. There. Get it out of there. That's when I'll go see it. Those <laughs> kids won't be there yapping the whole time. We had a very good audience. Uh, there were some young... I mean, it was mostly parents and younger kids, and uh, they were having fun. But not being annoying, so that was good. That's the important part. Yeah. I don't care if they're having fun. Just don't be annoying. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, Luke, you also saw a movie this week. I did. Um, I wasn't doing much on Sunday, and so I was like, oh, I should watch something. And I remember um, the movie Hitman had come out. Glenn Powell? Yes. Yes. Several weeks ago. I know people talked about it, and they are like, hey, this is good. This is fun. It's funny. Um, I was like, okay, I'll watch this. Wasn't really expecting much. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of something to do. It was a lazy Sunday. Um, it was a lot better than I thought. Nice. Um, it's about time Netflix had a hit, right? Yeah, true. Um, yeah, so if you don't know what this is, this is a movie that is somewhat based on a true story. Oh. Which I didn't know. And they say that at the beginning. <laughs> and it's pretty funny. They're like, some of this is based on a true story. We obviously changed stuff. <laughs> And at least it'd be enough about it's it. It's really funny because at the end of the movie, they're like, this was fake. <laughs> <laughs> um, wh which was great. Um, it, it is really funny. Um, there was a lot of funny moments throughout that uh, were making me laugh. Um, I understand the Glenn Powell hype, I think. Mm -hmm. He was great in this. Um, I didn't see anyone but you. Didn't really care about it. Yeah, I didn't either. Um. Obviously, he was great in Top Gun, but he's in that movie for 10 minutes, and he's the bully. He's mm. the Iceman character. Um, so, th I'm pretty sure this was my first experience with him as the lead, and I thought he was great. And he plays a lot of characters. Um, he... <sighs> the character is so interesting. Because this is a, this is a real person... And in the movie, he's a psychology and philosophy teacher at a college. Oh. And in his spare time, as a second job, he works for the police in catching people undercover who are trying to hire hitmen. Huh. And, like, the whole reason he gets the job is because the guy who usually goes undercover gets in trouble because he's, like, a dirty cop or something and... So he gets suspended. So they're like, hey, you're up. <laughs> okay. But yeah. they're like, led to me going like, okay, well, this is a true story. But this dude is good at everything. So, like, throughout the movie, I was like, arguing with myself the whole Mary Sue conflict mm -hmm. that goes in mainly superhero movies. Yeah. Um, or I should say nerd movies. It's typically Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this this is a Mary Sue character. And how come nobody has a problem when it's a a white man? Like, mm. What's going on? <laughs> anyway. Um but no, it's it's a lot of fun. Um the other per the other lead in this is let me get her name. Adria Arjona. I probably said it wrong. Um famously in Morbius. Oh, no, oh, that's yeah. not that's not the famous lead. She's an Andor. Sure, sure, but um, I but I recognize her from yeah. Morbius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like more people would recognize her from Morbius. It's unfortunate because she was not good in that movie. Nobody was good in that movie. <laughs> Nobody had a chance of being good in that movie. Um, she is great in Andor, and she is great in this. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad she just doesn't have Morbius <laughs> as her like. Um, what's IMDb? They're faint. They're oh, right here. Um, known for. Yeah, they're known for. Yeah. It's like, what are they known for? Morbius. Oh gosh, this ain't, this ain't good. But no, she's she's great. They have great chemistry. Um, they're a lot of fun together. 
They're very funny. Um, I'd say a very, very fun part of this movie, while it's not a huge part of the movie, is the costumes and characters that Glenn Powell's character plays. Because he kind of, mm. he gets into it and he like he's like, oh, I'm going to make this person, who would they be wanting to meet? Who do they expect their hitman to be? So he like dyes his teeth and puts on a wig and he's like this country trash <laughs> bullet wearing weird person and or he's like a russian like typical uh hitman you would like see in a movie mm-hmm. or some weird like there was one where i was like i don't know what this is <laughs> like some german dude um but he is like he makes all these little alter egos that he goes out and meets the people as and like he's still playing his character but his character is playing somebody else. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was a really, I thought it was a really well done performance. Nice. Um, but yeah. Um, let's see what else happened in this movie. Um, something that just, I realized when it ended. So the main character's name is Gary. And one of his alter egos, kind of the one you spend the most Gary. time with. His name is Ron. Which are two characters in Parks and Rec. Oh. In Parks and Rec, everybody loves Ron. Yeah. Ron is like one of the best characters in the show. Yeah, yeah. Gary, you know, Gary Gergich, everybody hates him. You know what? And it's the same in the movie. Ron is super cool. Cool. Gary's a dork. Yeah. And the best part is, is Retta is in the show. <laughs> who plays Donna in Parks and oh Rec. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so like, I ended it and I was like, is this just like a Parks and Rec rip? Or, like, spinoff? Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, it, like, made it better in my mind, because I just thought that was funny. Just a little get it's together. Like, it's yeah. like, oh, this is just in New Orleans, but it's in the same universe as <laughs> Parks and Rec, where people are kind of weird. Um, but, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. It's funny. It's lovely. Um, It's R-rated, if that's... Uh, important. Important to you. There is quite a bit of language. There's some sex saints Ooh. Oh um but it was a lot of fun i i would give it a fanboy worthy um nice it was it was a lot better than i was expecting and i feel like that's just with netflix i'm like oh yeah people are saying they're like it but like how good is it really yeah it's like no it's good uh, it's Ste- fun stephanie watched it and liked it and told me hey if you want to watch it i'll watch it again so i think you'd like it yeah it's it's pretty unique too just in like its story like the fact that it's a true story is crazy and yeah. obviously they do change stuff right <laughs> <laughs> over in the chat baroque says i thought glenn was really good in devotion the korean war movie about the first black navy pilot that was uh yeah i remember that's right wanting to go see that movie and not for whatever reason. I don't know, was that around the same time that Jonathan Majors was going through yeah, the first bout before. of... <laughs> it may have just been summer movie season and just, just no time, too. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think I think Glenn is a, is a great actor. I think he's kind of said that he's going to slow down and maybe just take the roles he really wants. Um, see, he's definitely is... in that place where he, he could get... He's almost in, any role he wants. He's but. John Glenn in Hidden Figures. Hmm. Yeah, what Didn't do you know? know? You always find the movies that they were like barely in. Right. What has he got in upcoming? Oh yeah, he's in Twisters. Twisters oh this summer. That's right. That movie's gonna be garbage, and I'm very excited. Oh, he's Chad Powers in the Chad Powers movie. Okay. Oh. Monsanto. Huntington. Monsanto. That's a the movie about a, uh, about a about a Monsanto. Monsanto is a place, person, corporation, oh. mega corporation. It's just gonna go through Ag- all the nouns. Agri- agri- agriculture. So they're known mostly for their. Why not uh, just click the link? A young man hatches a murderous plot to inherit his family's wealth. Ooh, oh, that actually sounds pretty. Oh, that's fun. Huntington. Oh, Huntington. That that one sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> Murder. Murder. Ironically, that's kind of what Hitman's about. Um, so this is for Monsanto. 
uh, young attorney Brett Weisner. Brent Weisner. Dang it, I sorry. thought it was going to be me. I was, you know, uh, I, was, I was just thinking of you. Takes on a case against Monsanto on behalf of groundskeeper Dwayne Lee jo- Johnson. They had to put the Lee in there. Because if it was Dwayne Johnson, <laughs> everybody would be like, huh? The Rock? Um, who used the company's weed killer roundup and developed cancer? Is this the like the movie we saw with the Teflon? Yeah. Is it that it's, story? No, no. Different. Oh. Uh, that was DuPont. Uh, different American uh, conglomerate who does not care about the health effects of the chemicals they're putting in their products. Classic. <laughs> Classic American story. Who would have thought? It's an American tale. As old as time. Uh, over in the chat baroque says so will twisters or borderlands be worse borderlands 100 percent, because that movie doesn't look fun twisters at least looks fun in my opinion um no i think i think i get them both i think borderlands should look more fun but somehow it doesn't like you have all these fun colors and the B- fun character just actors like it's, and borderlands but, looks like it's just ripping off of other things yeah yeah. Whereas Twisters is just like, let's just make a legacy sequel. Yeah. And throw these people under a turnpike, even though we all know. <laughs> you shouldn't do it. You know what I'm excited for, though? What? For Twisters. And I'm going to say this in my review. Unless they just haven't shown it in the trailers. But they're like at a rodeo, and a tornado shows up, and they're like, what? <laughs> what? How? <laughs> as somebody that lives right in the middle of tornado alley and i know we have the wichita bubble so we don't really yeah yeah we get but we know in wichita what is going on out in western kansas they they always tell you what's going on everywhere if you're watching tv yeah and everybody has cell phones my, you're gonna know you're in a tornado warning. That rodeo wouldn't happen. My my hypothesis <laughs> my hypothesis is that because of the uh, nanobots that they release into the tornado, the, it, the naders get worse. Yeah, they get worse. They oh, become more unpredictable. It's a compounding of climate change plus man made technology that just makes them spurt up like geysers from the ground. Twisters. The Geostorm. <laughs> the new empire. I just love that we're getting a, a, a scene where it goes through um, like a oil refinery or whatever, and, and we're, we're going to get like a fire tornado, even if it's just for a minute. Fire know. tornadoes are the best. Have you seen one in real life? Uh, no, but uh, Prince of uh, Egypt had one. So Yeah, that was created by God. Yeah, it was amazing. I'm not saying this one can really compete. God I'm is saying really good at creating it's stuff. It's better than nothing. <laughs> uh, right, roided out naders. Yes. Naders. We're getting some roided out naders and twisters. Naders be juicing. For sure. All right. Should we talk about some news? We should. Um, let's see. I'm making my time code here. 36 minutes. All right. Perfect. Ooh, doing work. Mm, doing the Lord's work. We had a Nintendo Direct this week. We did. Um, man, we've I do love this. This is the best this, Nintendo Direct I've ever seen. I'm I, not gonna lie. I love this part <laughs> of summer. That's not true. Because <laughs> because we we get an like even though E3 is not a thing anymore, we still get all these announcements from the gaming companies. They it's, just need to put them all in one week. Yeah, like, but that would be nice. That would be can that would be. PlayStation was like, no, we're gonna go a week early, and it was garbage. And Nintendo's like, we're going to do it a week late. And it was good. It's like, if we put those all in one week, <laughs> yeah, those would bounce each other out. They don't get the media attention that they want. I guarantee you they would. They got to compete. Nintendo always wins they, these Well, yeah, that's, 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 no one wants to compete. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, what are some of your highlights? You watched this. I, did, I caught the cliff notes, so you can tell me what... I saw a few things. I'm not going to mention everything. No. Because... Not like, everything's worth mentioning, but if you saw something, if man, you saw something and you want us to talk about it, there's put it so in the chat. many games on Nintendo where it's like 
yep, that's not for me. Yeah. That's not for me. That's not for me. Even, like, games that I think look cool. Mm-hmm. And I'll just start with this one. Legend of Zelda Echoes of... I didn't write down the whole title. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. Echoes of Wisdom. Wisdom, that's Thankfully, right. I already had the article pulled up. <laughs> um, there are some things in that game that I think are so cool. Mm-hmm. Like, the way combat works, where it's like, I can just copy and paste anything which is like, like reminds me of tears of the kingdom yeah where it's like you can build all this crazy stuff yeah and this one it's like i'm gonna copy this monster i'm gonna put it over there and now you fight the monster mm. i think it's genius yeah i'm not gonna play this game <laughs> and i love the art style mm-hmm. but i'm not gonna play it i played Link's awakening the the remake mm-hmm. for like two hours i'm too dumb to play that game <laughs> i'm what am i Bad at games. I'm bad at video He's games. He's bad at video games. Um, this is true. But I, th- I think that was a great showing, and people have been wanting to play Zelda forever. Yeah. And now you finally can. Yep. Um, so I'm I'm glad this was finally announced. Um, I think it looks really cool, but I'm probably not gonna play it. Sure. It'll probably Fine. also be seventy dollars. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is just another reason. Um. But yeah, super cool. Um, some, another game that I, I doubt I'll play, but I think looks really cool. And I think it's another thing people have been waiting for is another Mario and Luigi game. Yeah. Um, Brothership. Um, obviously it's Mario, so it's like way up there on their flagship of games. Yeah. It's Um, a, it's a tentpole. When, I don't remember when the last Mario and Luigi game came out. Um, been a hot minute and then they're also doing donkey kong country returns hd i think it's like the third or fourth time they've released this game <laughs> which is very nintendo um but hey i'm if if people are excited for for it again so they can play it on their switch now you know what i'm happy for you but like that's that's three games there that i'm probably not gonna play yeah um but there, there is one they announced that I am gonna play. The you know what? Lego Horizon Adventures. That's right, baby. Horizon and Lego on Switch, a PlayStation game <laughs> on Switch. I will buy this just for the sake of letting PlayStation know that they don't need to only release the games on PlayStation. <laughs> no, no, no. I probably won't play that unless it goes on a Switch sale or something. Yeah. Um, it did look super fun. It does, yeah. Lego games are, like, always great. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also curious what the story will be. And is it canon to the Horizon universe? Absolutely not. Lego, the Lego games are never canon to anything. <laughs> I mean, you never know. The Jurassic it's World... It's a sci-fi universe. The Jurassic Park Lego game is just, like, all of the movies crammed into one game. <laughs> and then they, like, some... Buddy, like, creates some weird dinosaur, and then somebody's gonna be like, We're gonna put that in the Scarlett Johansson one. Absolutely, like the dinosaur. Absolutely. Uh, so here's my other guess uh, Tales of the Shire. Yeah, little Hobbit game. Yeah, how'd you know? No, oh, I didn't even, I don't, I don't even remember that. <laughs> Left a real <laughs> positive impression. Hello, Kitty Island, let's go. <laughs> uh, what I'll, is... I'll say this about Nintendo, yeah, there's spectrum of audience is insane yes but it's crazy because i feel like so many of their games a person that's on the outside would be like oh that looks like a kid's game but you know what that kid's game is a zelda game right can also be like a very dark and violent game yeah um but yeah it's the the nintendo fan base or player base i should say is so vast and wide Mm -hmm. from the youngest of children to the oldest of old folks i do think they do a really good job at servicing all of those demographics though Mm -hmm. um it's it's the one platform that i'm always like i can go get something for my kid like a new i can i could just go into their backlog or even their new games, and be like, yeah, I'm sure I could find something for Claire here. Yeah. And I don't always feel like I can do that with Xbox and PlayStation. I'm just... You can't, like, you can't play Suica on on the Xbox. 
You can play it on PC <laughs> or Switch. Or babe. Switch. <laughs> yeah. There's my comfort game. If I'm in a bad mood, I I put on Suica and I drop fruit, baby. Oh, yeah. Okay, so have what played, is... Have you played that? No. Dude, it is... Apparently I need to. It's annoyingly addicting. <laughs> you just drop... It's a... Uh, oh, what's the... Com- be like 2048, maybe? Like you drop fruit and the two oranges hit each other. Oh, and it becomes sure. A lemon or yeah, something. Yeah, a little bigger, but it's a... And then you have to get two of the lemons together and it makes yeah. a watermelon. And the, yeah, 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 I get you it. Just try and get a high score. Eventually you fail. If you're me, you fail really quickly. You just start <laughs> over. Um, but, okay. The game I'm actually excited for. All the haters can suck it. When I predicted that we were going to get a Metroid Prime 4 reveal this year. And the announcement that it was coming out in spring 2025. We don't know spring yet. But guess what, folks? We got a Metroid Prime 4 trailer. Yep. With gameplay. Yep. I will add xbox and playstation <laughs> and a 2025 release date yeah let's go baby i'm back on the board <laughs> oh i'm so excited this was the greatest surprise especially after my little rant last week where i was like stop show uh, i won't call it a rant i'll call it a a tantrum maybe a little bit of a tantrum. kind of tantrum um whatever a tantrum is without tears mm. um I was I was uh, upset that all we ever get is Pokemon stuff. <laughs> and all I want is a Metroid Prime 4 trailer. <laughs> and you got it. I got it. It's finally coming. It's real. Oh, this and it looks so awesome. And the fact that like they're just like, okay, retro, just go make it. We took it away from you. Go now. You have it back. Go. Yeah. Go do your thing. Yeah. It's like let's go, baby. We're back in action. It looks so good. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, this was definitely the uh, the thing that I got most excited about as well. Out of, you know, not watching it live, but it was the first thing I wanted to go look at. Have you played Metroid Prime? Uh, yeah. Um, it's been... Back in the day. Back in the day. If you want to borrow the remaster, <gasps> Ooh. I got it. In All the right. 80s. It's spicy. Noise. It's, it's such a good remaster or remake whatever they did to it it's fun that's a such a fantastic game but yeah to finally like be have nintendo be like okay it's real metroid prime 4 beyond is what it's called it's it's actually real it's coming next year and now people are like switch 2 is this a launch title yeah. um, dude it might it would probably convince me to get Whatever the switch to is like just yeah as fast as I could yeah um and I do feel like the switch is showing its age at least in terms of loading how when did the switch come out didn't it come out like 2015 2016 I wanted to say when did 16 maybe 17 the switch come I feel like out. it's like seven years old 2017 17. 17 yeah so it is seven years old. That feels like a pretty quick turnaround. I don't know why. Well, they did the upgrade back in like 2021, 20, right? They That's did true. the OLED version. When did – maybe I'm just – I don't know. I guess it, it – maybe I'm thinking of because like Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 – slim or whatever it was came out before those and i'm probably trying to pair it with those where at nintendo's just on their own schedule they really are because they even between the wii yeah they've had the they had X and the well they had the wii u five. well they also had the wii u though nintendo had the wii u which was like we don't talk about that yeah okay but i'm saying <laughs> even they were like oh, oh what no are we thinking? <laughs> This sucks! Like, that console didn't live seven years. Tyler's not here to defend his Wii U he had for three weeks. <laughs> oh, decisions were made. How unfortunate. But it's... Man, I can't wait. Metro Prime 4, bring it on, baby. Yep. Yep. Pretty exciting. Were, this, were there any other gaming news stories this um, week? I don't have any written down. Okay, I didn't say... I've not been off-grid, but... Um... News is too hard to follow. It is. No. Uh, Baroque, where is that dude? I missed the first 20 minutes. Uh, he's just not here today. 
He's he's uh, he wasn't feeling hundred percent, so we gave him the night off. He has the black lung. He's bedridden. He's got grayscale. And grayscale is contagious, you know. Yeah, I'm not afraid of grayscale. Oh, okay. I got my COVID vaccine. <laughs> Same thing, right? <laughs> Actually, I haven't gotten that. In, in you haven't got a booster? I, th- I think mine is probably expired. Nah. Uh, I'll be all right, though. You'll be fine. You're. Uh, you also have asthma. <laughs> Maybe not. Does asthma make. Higher red. Worse? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, not grayscale. COVID. <laughs> oh. No. no, I'll be fine. I've had asthma my whole life. I'll be all right. I don't okay, have cool. severe asthma. I, <laughs> I love how we're qualifying this now. It's fine. Um, you mentioned Jurassic uh, World earlier. Scarlett Johansson signed on. We gotta officially. We gotta get a new subtitle for the new trilogy, man. Jurassic Yard. Yard. Oh, perfect. We we went like big, bigger, and then we're 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 bringing it back. Well, I was thinking like a prison yard. The dinosaurs. Ooh. You know, like it's a it's a zoo. They're enclosed. Yeah. Maybe they view it as a yeah. prison, and it's actually a stomp the yard. Like a like a like it's combining. Is it a re re re? We're gonna combine to remake um, sequel, a re sequel. <laughs> we're gonna combine Stomp the Yard with um, what's the movie um where they play football in prison? The Longest Yard. The Longest Yard. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna combine those. Except it's Jurassic Yard and it's dinosaurs in prison dancing and playing football. It's yeah. the best movie I've I ever love it. created. <laughs> Uh, Baroque's pitch is Jurassic Galaxy. If if we're going to expand, bring in. I could see like let's bring in James Gunn. Have him do like a Guardians of the Galaxy esque thing with dinosaurs. Or Eli Roth. Or Eli Roth. Yeah, I mean, he's just not? ripping off Guardians of the Galaxy for absolutely, Borderland, so. absolutely. See, it'll be fine. Jurassic, I guess. Planet. I mean, world they is already just, planet. They should, maybe they should just change the front adjective. Like, I know they have Cretaceous Camp. Maybe they should just do Triassic Park. This is the mm. third trilogy. The Triassic period. We can go into woolly mammoths and the Ice Age stuff. You know, oh, they're developing feathers. I mean, most definitely. Mammals are Not all of those dinosaurs up. are in the, were in the Jurassic period. But, like, they kind of got into how dinosaurs were mutating in Jurassic World, even in Jurassic Park. No, you're not right. You're it's not like, wrong. Oh, you're not they're wrong. actually mutating to what they actually were. Yeah. It's like, oh, to survive, they had to be this. It's like, oh, so they're developing feathers because they're birds. I think they just do what they did with the second film in the series, The Lost World. Give it a, a title, The Lost World, Jurassic World, right? Like Jurassic Park. It's It's that, like... Dra- um, the Lost a night, World, a Knives a night. Out story. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The yes. Lost World, a Mad Max saga. <laughs> the Lost World, a Star Wars story. I definitely think they'll keep Jurassic World in there unless they go back to Jurassic Park. I don't think they will. I think they branded that. Uh... As in, like, franchise IP-esque things Do you think enough. Spielberg sees Jurassic World as, like, how they just call it now, and he's just like, ugh. Jurassic World. He's probably like, ugh. Yeah, and then he gets that check every month. He's like, oh, all right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> this, is paying oh, for, yeah. <laughs> this is paying for... This is paying for my fourth house, so, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna make another movie about my mom and dad. That's right. And that's funding, funding his films. Just like all uh, a tour creators have to uh, film their own things these days, like Francis Ford Coppola and Kevin Costner. <laughs> Did you see he's like gonna have to pay for all the marketing? Yeah, <laughs> Lionsgate was like, we'll we'll uh, we'll be a we'll be a distributor, but we're not paying for <laughs> Oh, Francis Ford Coppola, I'm so sorry. We'll, we'll um, take all that the benefits mo- with another cost. That movie is not as good as it needs to be. If no one's willing to pay for marketing. I mean, and now you can say that because people have seen it. Yeah. So it's like... Okay. I'm still excited. I'll still go see it. Um, but speaking of the other one in that pairing I just talked about, Kevin Costner is officially out at Yellowstone. He has 
basically said he's 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 done with the drama. I don't know exactly what that means, but sounds like there was He's more interested in comedy now. Oh. Not not I'm assuming. Yeah, well if it's not it's the opposite. I mean there's of drama. only two types of movies, drama or comedy. And I'd like to s- both, so. I'd like to see him go into horror actually. Maybe that's what Horizon is. Oh, there we go. But yeah, he's got his Horizon he's film. A bone or else. <laughs> um <laughs> Dances with Wolves? No, no, Bone Tomahawk. Isn't that the horror western? Oh, I don't know. I think it is. I haven't seen it. And I've wanted to, but there's nowhere to watch it. Last time I checked. Mm, darn. Well, let's go check out that last operating blockbuster in Portland, Oregon, or whatever. Or Maybe they'll have it. Or or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't end, end poorly. I mean, Amazon video rentals kevin cosner stars in and directs zombies of the wild west i'm down one star on letterbox (laughs) don't even need to see it but yeah not a ton of news this week um like i said inside out 2 killing it um i think it's nearing uh 800 700 so this is as of this morning. It has a global this morning Monday, Monday, Monday June twenty fourth. Uh, it has a global um, revenue of seven hundred twenty five million. So that's going to hit a wow. billion dollars very quickly. You know, one mo- some some movie had to do it. One movie always has to hit a billion dollars. Yeah, but usually it's a movie that you're like, huh? <laughs> like last year there was two. Mario. Yeah. And Barbie. And yeah. uh, Oppenheimer. Didn't it hit a billion? Yeah. Or did it hit 999 billion? <laughs> you know, I'm not actually sure if it... I don't think it hit a billion. Still, the movie's R-rated, so, you know. It did incredibly well for being what it was. Rated R inflation. And an R- R-rated three-hour biopic. That's not going to make that much money, and then it did. So, good job. Um. So, yeah. Good job, Inside Out 2. I've got three stories. Ooh. Um, I'll start with the sad one. Oh. Um, Donald Sutherland died. Yeah. Yeah. He was 88. Um, I don't know if this is bad or not, but this is just what I always think about when Donald Sutherland comes up. Mm -hmm. I think about the Italian Job remake. Is that bad? He's in that movie for like ten minutes. I don't know if it's great. If it's great, but I really like that movie though, and I don't know if that's a hot take or not. No, I mean but I don't know why. That's the movie I always think. Of. I don't. No, I don't think the movie. To be clear, I don't think the movie is bad, and I just think it's like that's an interesting choice for. I don't know why. The first thing to remember him by, which is, but look, it's fine. We all have our own things that we connect people to, so. Yeah. No. And, I mean, most people are like, oh, President Snow over Hunger Games. And yeah. I'm over here going, is Charlie Thir- Charlie Starr's dad in the Italian <laughs> job remake? <laughs> now I want to watch the Italian job. I actually, that's probably, I don't know if it's bad enough to be considered a guilty pleasure. Um, But I really do enjoy that movie. Mainly because of the Spider-Man random thing in the middle. Have you ever seen that? Notice that? Mm-mm. I've never noticed that. You've never noticed Spider Man in the Italian job? It's one of those blink and you'll miss it. I was going to say, clearly I like haven't the, been the on. the gorilla walking across the people tossing the... black and white balls. Right, and you just don't see the Fox gorilla. Yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a moment in the movie. Um, it's when the street blows up and the truck falls through. Uh-huh. There's just a moment where you see Spider Man right in the middle of frame. <laughs> Like, clear as day. If you pay attention, once you see it, you never miss it. That's hilarious. And it's hilarious. just a dude in this, like, Spider-Man outfit, outfit. fully covered, good-looking costume. Maybe, kind of. And he's just like, uh-huh. and then, then it goes to the next scene. And it's <laughs> Edward Norton going like, where the fuck is my truck? Yeah. So, if if you want to see Spider-Man in the Italian job. Now I know. Now you know. Now you know. Um, but, yeah. Rest in peace, Donald Sutherland. R.I.P. Yep. R.I.P. Uh, the next story I have 
and this this is another thing I've just been waiting for forever. And now it's the perfect time. Now that Star Wars is <laughs> honestly, it's just kind of a mess. Um, everywhere. Um, Spaceballs Two was announced. Oh my gosh, that's right. Uh, Josh Gad uh, is signed on to be in it, and mm-hmm. Mel Brooks is producing it. Well, look, as long as Mel Brooks is producing it, yeah. I'm I'm more or less okay with it. Yep. Um, and he just made History of the World Part Two. Part Two for Hulu. For Hulu. Um, I don't wonder if part of, like, the reason they, he made that was like, hey, like, I'm still into making stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think Spaceballs 2 is something he always, like, it was a joke in the movie, like, oh, Spaceballs 2, the search for more money. <laughs> if but it's I, not named that. <laughs> oh, it's gotta. It's gotta be, it's right? It's gotta be that. <laughs> if it's not, the movie will not be good. Like, that's a big red flag. Um, but uh, I, I'm very, very excited for this. What it will be, um, will it be good. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, please be good. Please be good. Thankfully, I'll always have the original Spaceballs. There's so much you can make fun of though with Star Wars though. Those the recent movies and shows are so. So all over the place in quality. Well, there's so much you can poke fun at, and you have the prequels. You, you've got to make fun of. You've got prequels, to and make you fun can of. make fun of the fans even more now. I was gonna say, even you can you can talk the about the discourse and the there's discourse. A, there's commentary to be had there for sure. No discourse. There's no Star Wars. Okay, yeah, there is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What's your third story? Um, what is my third story? Oh, it's a Star Wars. Oh! <laughs> Actual Star Wars. Um, Mendo. Ben Mendelsohn is returning for Andor Season 2. Let's go. This is the best thing that could have happened for Star Wars. <laughs> we got an actor that everybody loves. I think in a character that everybody loves. Yeah, yeah. Who was great. Good, yeah. In a movie that I think most people consider one of the best out of the Disney era. If not the best. I know it's a lot of people's favorite Star Wars. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people have, were like, I like this when it came out, and I think a lot of people have even gone to the, like, the oh, I, I love this. I think I'm the most negative person I've met about that movie. Yeah. And I really like it. Yeah. I, you know, I just have my problems with sure. the, the middle. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, he's returning his critic for Andor, Center, Andor Season 2. This is awesome news. Yeah. Um... I can't wait to have him back. I'll never say no to Ben Mendelsohn. Yeah, agreed. Even even though, uh, what was that other Disney show he did? It was horrible. Did I watch it? He died in it. Um, yeah, you watched it. We all hated it. Then well, I don't I, remember it. The, the Marvel. I, I've, the Marvel. I've ejected it from my brain. Um, oh. Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion, that's right. The show that it will never be referenced again because it was so bad and it made no sense. We've already all forgotten about it. Dude, that movie was so bad. The movie, the show was so bad. It was rough. Just garbage all the way through. Can't even believe it. Yeah, they killed him off in that. They're like, oh, sorry. Do you want to come back in this one? We'll pay you. <laughs> sorry about that. My bad, my bad. Oh, my bad. Yeah, Critic back. Awesome. Love it. Yep. Um, so I mentioned earlier we'd be talking a little bit about DC, and we've talked about some of the things. But uh, starting today, set photos have started leaking on the new Superman film. Superman with David Corn Sweat, Corn Sweat, Corn Corn Sweat. Let's call him Dave. Dave. <laughs> um. Yeah, we've gotten we get a pretty good look at him in the suit, Superman suit. Um, Mister Terrific, mm-hmm. who is also in the film, and then uh, Lois Lane. I haven't seen that one. Oh, I have it right here. Don't show me. Okay. She looks good. She looks good. Well, I mean, it's a Rachel Brosnan. I know she looks good. <laughs> um, yeah, I saw the pictures and I was like, "Cool, that's awesome." And then it's the only thing I've seen the rest of the day. Ah, and I'm so tired of it. The it's feed, like, the, you know the, what? The algorithm just like Luke looked at this for like two seconds longer than he usually does. Let's give it to him more. Well, Tyler sent it in the chat, and what yeah, I've yeah. noticed is if somebody sends something in the chat. I see it for the next week. Oh, interesting. I don't ever see anything. In the if chat. I if I see 
if I send it, I see that account mm-hmm. for the week. It's and then I usually have to mute it, and it's like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I liked one thing from you. I don't mean I don't like everything you say. Right, but right. Like, all I've seen on my Twitter feed now is David Cornsweet and. Uh, I don't remember his name. The dude who's playing Mr. Terfic. And it's just mm. like, oh, I'm going to mute everything that has to do with <laughs> Superman now. Because, you know what? I just want to watch the movie. Yeah. If James Gunn wants to show me something, he can show me. That's that's fair. <laughs> yeah. I don't typically have a, 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 a this, huge yeah. problem with seeing on-set photos and being like, that's too much. Um, but again, my feed doesn't isn't as aggressive in yeah. I don't like I don't stuff, mind so. seeing it, but it's like it's just it's just too much. My phone Baroque says my phone hears my supervisor speak in Spanish, so now I get Spanish ads on Twitter. <laughs> oh, that's they amazing. They do be listening. That is amazing, and I love they it. They do be listening. Um. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Suits do look great, though. I'll just say that. Yeah. They both looked awesome. Yeah. They do. They do. Uh, Luke, did you say you had a fan box question for us today? Or are you just saving that for when Tyler's back? Um, well, I had the one we were talking about earlier. And I've, ar- and I've already forgotten it. Um, You're going to have to reintroduce me. Oh, yeah. We can wait until Tyler's back with that, or do you want to do it now? No, it doesn't matter. Let's wait till Tyler's back. We'll wait till Tyler's back. That's fine. That's fine. And then if it's... It will probably still be relevant because absolutely the acolyte will still be airing. <laughs> Fair enough. So it's gonna be a topic until the, the day next we thing die that comes out. Oh, well, say that's forever cool. and ever Maybe and ever. It won't. Hey, if, if we to our if answers. we solve it, it won't be a problem. Okay, um, well t- we can talk about it. We can the week when Tyler's here. We can. So we've kind of both reviewed the big thing we did this week, but. Like, was there anything else you did that you want to talk about? Weekly update type stuff? Anything worth mentioning? Well, I talked about episodes one to three of The Acolyte last week, mm-hmm. and then you had to bail. I did. I zipped out. Um, and now we have a fourth. There's four episodes now, and it was the worst one, I would say. I, I think the show is really bad. So Luke's level here is kind of like, Middle of the road, middle of the road, up a little bit, and then down, like bad, for you? It was never middle of the road. Okay, so it bad, was, it was bad, bad, slightly better, and then, but still bad, and then bad, bad, bad. Bad, bad, not as bad, worse. Bad. Okay. Like, right. the worst. The, the, the worst. <laughs> um, I'll, I also want to reemphasize again, like, the discourse around the show is really annoying. Mm-hmm. Just, like, review bombing stuff, just because... You think a show is trying to be woke. It's so annoying. Um, just let people make the show they want to do and cast the people they want to cast. And let's judge the story and the art they create. Um, everything else doesn't matter. But also yeah. it kind of does. It is important. Um, but still after what I'm hearing is we're what halfway through the season. We're halfway through the season. And I it, feel like and nothing it really has nothing has gone been on. hitting for you. I I think the acting is bad. I think the story is, um, it could be interesting if it was done better. I think the action has been extremely subpar because there's been one action scene, which is the opening scene yeah. of the entire show, and then in the last episode. Just the way it's paced and the way they ended it was just like, who's making this? Mm. I just didn't understand the decisions they were making for the entire episode. Yeah. Um, just, I think it's I think it's bad filmmaking. Episode four is definitely the, the thus far the bottom of the barrel for me. I would agree with that. I think that it was weird um, going from a uh like pay like you look at the season and how it's being paced like the first two episodes feel about right in terms of what you're trying to introduce <laughs> right like you're introducing the world and so yeah, uh-huh. so you have like an action scene to get people excited and then your characters here and there and i think they reveal they do that reveal very early on um about them being the the sister stuff yeah um and they don't i don't think they do that in a way that's 
really compelling. Um, I don't know why you set it up seemingly as a mystery if you're just going to reveal it in that manner. Um, but then, yeah, episode three, uh, a, I don't know if I liked it more than episode two um, or one. I know one and two kind of blur together for me at this point. I thought episode three did interesting stuff just with like, hey, these people have the force, but they view it differently. It's a, And because they're yeah. way out here, it's different to them the way yeah. they just view it. It's they're witches. It's the exact same as the Night Sisters, yeah. where they use this green magic. It's the force. Yeah. But they have the thread is what they call it. Like yeah. I was like, cool. It's a cool concept. Cool. And I think it's a it's a interesting thing. And it's I thought it was cool also that it's like a Amazonian Wonder Woman style oh, sure. coven type yeah, thing out which, here. Which which is coven. Which is you know what? That's something that also really annoyed me. Mm-hmm. Like people are like, "Why are these just women out here doing things?" It's like, do you like the character Wonder Woman? <laughs> it's the same thing. They probably don't. And she was just created out of clay originally. <laughs> That's how she was made. It's magic. It's space magic. The twins are Wonder Woman in the Star Wars universe. It's not that big of a deal. There's ah. also uh, there's also explosions in space and fire in space. That's just Star Wars. That's they've gotten that wrong every chance they get. Yep. But they, it's just different every time. <laughs> so you just like that's the stuff you got to ignore. Po- point being, for but, me at least, in yeah. terms of in terms of this, like it, I feel like that could have been a better bottle episode than it was. Um, mm-hmm. Premise great. Uh, you know, I, I think the acting. I think the writing and the acting wasn't great. Uh, wasn't good enough to carry that premise through especially when you have because sometimes you can have maybe not so great you know this feels like it's shot in the volume right so like you can maybe get away with some of that if you've got really compelling actors telling a really compelling story it you still might rub you the wrong way but you could forgive that mando season one yeah um and two and yeah and two for sure um but it just didn't hit and Mm -hmm. and then that led for me that was like a ooh a bit of a stumble, and then it led into episode four, which, you know, brings you back to quote unquote present day, and just a. Can we just what? Can we just talk about how she discovers her sister has been alive this entire time? It's just <laughs> like, I'm gonna go. This is your problem. I know it's my sister, but I don't want to deal with this, so I'm gonna go, and like, whatever the girl with the horns her name is yeah x23 she's just like okay bye (laughs) (laughs) these these feel like the most nonchalant jedi about i just the fact that there's like some evil order hunting them down and like this this is also a problem i have the show with the show like people have been complaining about the jedi and that they're like dicks and it's like kind of always been that yeah no that's actually very on brand <laughs> but like when they first announced the show and they're like it's a hundred years before and i was like that's not far enough yeah this is why it, it just it connects too much to the prequels mm. it's it's too soon it should have been 800 and then guess what you can do whatever you want you're far enough in yeah. the past that Things can just happen. I do. And they can be forgotten. I or do included. think it's going to do a direct tie-in to the prequels in some way. That just it just seems like it's a very Lucas twenty. It's a very Disney Lucas. Yeah, twenty fourteen yeah. on Lucas film thing to do. I um, mean, everybody was freaking out because Kitty Adi Mundi was there, yeah. and whose Wikipedia birthday is now been changed. Okay, I don't really care. <laughs> you had to see this coming. Come on, people. <laughs> So, um, I'm not, I'm not hating this, uh, show. Uh, it is, it's kind of been, uh, back, it, like I watch it, I'll sit down and I'll watch it and you laundry. Yeah, kind of. It's the, phone. the problem is the problem is two, two nights before I get to watch an episode of game of Thrones or excuse me, house of the dragon and yeah get it right oh my bad and like 
the 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 quality difference is just and I'm I'm not saying every show has to be a that quality. We couldn't afford it. Um but it it is just a little bit like okay, I'm not sure how much I care about this. Um but I'll hop along for the ride. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I'm just not letting it I'm not letting it bother me. It's fine. It's I, not. I'm. I'm so hyped for Andor season two, man. Like it. It's gonna be hard. It's years? gonna be a hard. Pro- oh yeah, no. I'm. I'm gonna be patient yeah. for sure. Um, I allow myself to be bothered by it for like five to ten minutes. Yeah, and yeah. Then move on. And then only you know, when only when we only when we bring it back up again on yeah. the pod. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. I mean, who wants to sit here and just talk about something non-emotional? Like, look, I. I listened. Up. I listened for like three years. The thing in Star Wars I love the most. Everyone in the world shit on. So. And you. What did I do though? You. You. I stopped caring. You stopped caring. I'm just like you know what. <laughs> and I think Brent I think, loves it. I don't care. People no, love the acolyte. Thanks. I don't care. Thanks. People love stuff in the prequels, like all of it. And it's like, <laughs> okay don't care yeah i've also come to realize maybe not come to like it's a sudden thing just over time you know how i view a piece of a a film we'll just be simple here like how i how i appreciate a a film changes over time and that's okay too like i might not like this now and i might like it or there's something that i like when it first comes out, like, I think I do have there, we, we, the cycle, right. Of like, uh, this was the worst thing ever. Oh, it was underappreciated. Oh, it's the best thing ever. You know what? Like, Sometimes that I'm... cycle is kind of real. And so I just try to not be quite so, um, I think it hyperbolic helps. with it. Like, yeah. it's like, Oh no, this was good. Or, Oh, I didn't like this. And then, Oh, like it's, it's all right. And then it's like, Oh, I can appreciate this. Mm-hmm. And I just have the smaller circle. <laughs> I think it helps too. When you end up liking something that everybody hates. Yeah. Oh, and you're for just sure. like, I think I'm not going to talk so much crap on this stuff that everybody <laughs> else hates anymore. <laughs> Absolutely. Perspective. Build some perspective. But yeah. From a certain point of view. Uh, Luke, what'd you think of uh, House of the Dragon season episode two? Dude, House of the Dragon season two has been really good. Um, obviously, we talked about episode one yep. last week. Um, episode two starts off super sad, and then no offense to the outcome of what the like what happened to those characters, but I thought the ending was even sadder because of what goes down (laughs) it's like no don't do this to me man no yeah i didn't didn't know who was who i'm just like i don't care Ah! i don't want this to happen um yeah they've done a really good job in pacing these first two episodes of giving us i think what we we may have talked about this last week how and they've kind of figured out what an episode needs to do um to kind of give you that catharsis uh about you know m- midpoint but then they introduce something new that they can they can kind of hit you with gut, gut punch you yeah. at the very end and make you want more mm-hmm. you know make you want to come back and 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 get more i it it to go back th- four, five minutes here the acolyte does something at the end of episode four, which I, is supposed to feel like a cliffhanger, but, but because there's no catharsis in the middle of that episode and it's it's paced really poorly, it just feels like that should be the midpoint of the episode. I was expecting commercials in the acolyte, and it got I got credits instead. And I was just like, yeah. you've got to be kidding. Yeah, me. it cuts to black, and you're like, oh no no no, oh. this is halfway through this episode. So it also uh, helps. When you just don't make episodes that are only 30 minutes long. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think this episode of uh, House of the Dragon was like minutes. an hour. Yeah, yeah, an hour nine. Really long. It was, it I was, liked that. It was lengthy. It's like, hey, let's give our characters beefy moments to breathe and communicate and talk and figure things out and react yeah. instead of just, we're walking through the woods. We're here. We're done. And I really like what they've done. No spoilers here, but I really like what they're doing with Matt Smith's character. Uh, Damon, um, he is so fascinating to me 
uh, because they've definitely pitched him as at least at the end of season one, right? Like he is going to be this loyal, maybe, maybe a bit of a war dog. Right. But like, and already here in the first two episodes, we're maybe we're questioning that we're, what are his real motives? And I just think he's a really interesting character because of uh, the complexity he has mm-hmm. with the Iron Throne and power. And and uh, Game of Thrones universe is the like I feel like the one one of a probably a couple shows where you can actually question oh yeah what's gonna happen yeah because if this was a more traditional show you'd be like. Oh yeah, he's gonna do this, but he'll he'll be back. Right. And he'll come in and save the day. Yep. And oh, it'll, it might be a heroic sacrifice or something. Yeah. But this is um, <laughs> that's not good this for is these not characters. Good. And um, if you are at all aware of, I don't. Are, do you know what happens in the universe? Like in, with this story? No. Like how anything ends and when Dude, it ends. I don't read books. Okay. Well, I don't read books either, but <laughs> I don't like to Google stuff and have it spoiled. Either. Well, I don't particularly either. But just <laughs> when things are taking place, it's like, oh, okay, so that's gonna be interesting because of you know, this isn't gonna be an eight season show. Mm-hmm. This is probably gonna be a. This is what I assume. This is like a four, three or four season show, probably. Th- this is what I assume happens. Um, somebody, one of the other houses is going to show up and they're going to be like, I'm Billy Bob Targaryen. (laughs) And they're going to have their hair dyed silver Mm -hmm. and they're going to trick any of the many Targaryen people. And they're going to be like, oh, great. Let's have a baby. (laughs) And then none of the, it's really going to matter. It's just going to be somebody. It's going to be Glenn Powell from. Uh, Of course. (laughs) <laughs> silver wig no 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 um no i don't know i don't know what goes on but i'm very curious what will happen yeah i think the super interesting thing about this episode was how all the characters kind of have the same story and it felt like the theme for the last two episodes has been one person's vengeance doesn't help everybody yeah because something bad happens and one person goes i'm gonna do something about this and something worse happens so somebody one person goes i'm gonna do something about this and it makes things worse so one person goes i'm gonna do something about this and makes things worse and it's like oh Maybe selfishness isn't the best tactic, you ding dong. Yeah, revenge rarely. Uh, revenge is a dish best served cold. Revenge is just not the answer. I've heard. Re- revenge won't. Yeah, there's a there's a line in here where it's like when princes squabble, it's the poor folk who suffer, mm-hmm. right? And like, I think that's, you know, if if the the powerful people in the world at this point are. Like, if their themes are revolving around grief, um, and then there's, like, the middlemen that are doing all this, like, uh, revenge and selfishness, because uh, they, cause they don't know how to really help, actually. Because they either have a blind view yeah. of how it will help, or it's selfishness in themselves, are like, oh, if I help them, it helps it's me, help, it helps because me. I'm going to be the hero yeah. to them. In reality, they're just making things worse. Yeah, yeah, and then there's and then there's the poor people who are wailing, hanging from the rafters. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, crying over fathers and sons. Dude. Or sorry, th- that was the best scene in the episode, though. Not the hanging, but like after, after? that, so when good. He, it's the only time I've really ever liked Otto Hightower. Yeah, where he's just talking to Aegon and Chris and Cole, <laughs> and he's just like, are, it's like this is the dumbest prank I've ever seen anybody do. <laughs> and like to just call it a prank was just like Ooh, Ooh. that was mean <laughs> yeah that, that was a great scene dude i did i did love how the gloves came off there for a moment and i hope we get to see a little more of that before he inevitably 
you know, gets strung up by his grandson. <laughs> we've been we've been losing a lot of important, I'll call them important mm-hmm. b- characters that just don't have a lot of screen time. Yeah, um, and it's like they've all been very meaningful when characters are dying. But I feel like we're gonna we're starting to get into the parts now where it's like. The, the players are going to start um, taking some hits. The uh, the the chess board... The C team has been <laughs> taking some hits. And uh, now the B team... I think they should be worried. Yeah, absolutely. A team... Mostly safe. Mostly, mostly safe. safe. Maybe one now. is a shock value moment in this yeah. season. Yeah, I can see that. Um, But B team, I would be worried. Yeah. I would be worried. If your second billing squad <laughs> please uh hang up your wig and cape or dress <laughs> oh so please good. leave the island <laughs> so good can't wait to to see more it's been that. really good yeah it is it's yeah. a great show it's gonna be it's gonna get me through the summer <laughs> for six more six weeks. more weeks that's close enough <laughs> that gets me into but here's the here's early the best august news, though I'm pretty sure the bear comes out this Wednesday. It does. Which means you can binge watch three seasons of the bear. <laughs> <laughs> you can laugh, cry, and have, have tons sure, of anxiety. I'm, I'm not sure I'm in the... <laughs> I have the time Dude, to so do that. Dude, I'm so excited. I know what I'm oh, doing this weekend. If it God. actually... I, I thought I saw us dropping this Wednesday. And if it drops this Wednesday, I'm going to watch like one episode. I need tonight. to show you my schedule Thursday for the night. next week. and I'm going crazy on Saturday. Just tell me exactly when I can I'm gonna find time to watch this. I'm going to be a mess next week. I can't wait to hear about how much of a mess you are. Honestly. I'm a mess every so. week. <laughs> I just hide it better. Um, I really haven't done much other than, the, 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 other than watching those two shows. Um, Luke, anything else that you want to add to your weekly update? Uh, just, you know, back on the Destiny 2 grind. Actually, something... Yeah, I've been off for most of this last week. I need to get back on. I, I didn't play it. Because, what am I? Bad at games. I'm bad at video games. That's right. Video games. You know what? I am bad at games. <laughs> that's that's actually pretty good. I Here's something about Luke. I don't like board games. Um, the only, I'd say, board game I'd play is a tabletop game, which is D&D. Yeah. Um... I, I don't like board games because usually you have that one ultra competitive person that loves board games. Mm, and it, yeah. I think it ruins it for everybody else. Um, but I've I've been watching people play the Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC. For, oh um, yeah, uh, Elden Ring, <laughs> and it's like I didn't really enjoy that game because I'm bad at video games and it was really hard. So like I'm just not gonna enjoy it. But it has been a lot of fun to watch people mm-hmm. just rage through that DLC, <laughs> man. And then, like, when they beat somebody and they just, like, yeah, let's go. Like, I even get a look excited. It's like, yeah, how did you even do that? I don't even think any of what's going on. But uh, it's it's putting, like, this spark in me to uh, go back into uh, Armor Core 6, which I never beat. Oh, yeah. Because it's hard. <laughs> and I better be right. Um... <laughs> And then also the main thing that I'm like, I should update it and keep playing it, um, is Remnant 2, mm. which is on Game Pass. Oh. You should, do you have Game Pass? I right don't now? have Game Pass right now. <laughs> if, if you I know I'm the worst. want to play that, I would honestly like put down Destiny for like two or three weeks to just grind that with anybody who wants to play it. Because that game is so awesome. Nice. I think you would really like it. And plus, Tyler has it, too. So we could go through easies. It's a multiplayer game, so I'm more likely to play it. That's right. It's but bet. it's a story-driven multiplayer game. <gasps> There's no PvP. Hey, you know how much Destiny PvP I've played? Zero. I mean, you've, I've, only, you've only played, like, 15 hours of Destiny in the past year or so. But, I, but the new expansion! I've played the entire campaign... Yeah, I've done some of the exotic quests. I've, I have played with people, uh, but not the PvP part. I mean, I've played one game of so. PvP. The, 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 okay. I, I saw need, it on I my little it. seasonal challenge tracker thing, and I was like, mm, I need to complain not about worth the it Destiny right now. community for a little not bit. Not worth it right now. 
because this happens every time there's a release mm -hmm. and new stuff comes out. It's yeah. Like new aspects, fragments, or subclasses. People complain about Titans again? No. Well, kind of. <laughs> no, people complain about PvP. They're like, how come PvP oh. is still in the state? It's like, just enjoy the new thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like maybe it takes a little time for the community to put in some input into their systems and they can right. go, oh, this doesn't work well. Yeah. Let's fix it. Then maybe they can fix it. Well, I feel Instead, like it's, been, it's been like a week and they're going... Oh, why, why, why does this grenade do this, and why doesn't my Gear Three auto rifle three tap? <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> didn't they get new? They got new maps in, yeah, into, into the, the light, light and, and they're, stuff. They're so really good too, man. They're so all like, fantastic. there's there's kind of like a mid, you know, pre-expansion update, I suppose, and then I don't know. I'm trying to see the silver lining, which I know no one actually wants to do it's like can we just enjoy the new the new stuff no like i know there's the pvp people out there but come on like we're still out here just trying to finish quest. <laughs> there's still a lot to do in that game so. there's always stuff to do in it, which is why i grind it all the time baby truth i just have fun shooting stuff so true so truth so much truth people are complaining about titans though because Titans are not as good as the other classes right now. So I don't know if you saw the stats from the raid. Did you see this? Two Titans. Three. Three. Out of the top 50 teams, which is 350, 300 people. Yeah. Um, three were Titans. So 1%. That's rough. Um... And I I feel like I can agree, kind of. I did finish the campaign on my other characters. Mm -hmm. So I could unlock Prismatic. There's just so much more synergy on those classes. I played as your Warlock for a bit. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun. It is. You can do so much stuff. And there's like it feels like there's multiple options. I can do this, this, or this. Mm -hmm. Hunter's insane. Yeah. Like, straight up. <laughs> It's easily the best. Their transcendence grenade, I think, is interesting. Um, Titans definitely won in that department. I think they have the best transcendent grenade. But mm. Titans are like they have one build. Yeah. And like they need. Sure, more. I'm in the strike playlist. I can use this, but it's like if but, I'm gonna do something that requires me to like play well. Yeah. I have to use this mm. or my old subclasses. Yeah like so bungie's looking at titans they actually confirmed it <laughs> they're like ooh. <laughs> now the dylan's back yeah baby dng's back everything's gonna be everything's it's all gonna be good fine. everything's fine well cool all right i think that's gonna bring us to the end of this episode dude now i'm just thinking about remnant though <laughs> <laughs> lou's gonna take a destiny break to play remnant dude, crazy if, if you get game pass and download it i will you you too tyler Let's play more. Let's play more Remnant too. I'd be down at some point. Game. Not this week. Because I don't have time. I want to look at my my rankings from that year it came out. I think it was my number two game. Yep. Oh, because Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Three, uh, Baldur's, Baldur's Gate, Gate 3, Three came out. Yeah. If Baldur's Gate Three didn't exist last year, Remnant Two would have been my game of the year last year. That game <laughs> was so good. <laughs> It's the best feeling third person shooter I've ever played, which I feel like coming I was from gonna me. Say, is, that's that is high praise because you're not a. I don't like playing in third person no, when I'm no playing a don't. shooter, unless it's like an action game, like Uncharted, where it's like it doesn't really matter. Right, it's on rails. But like the shooting <laughs> matters in that game, and it's like, oh, this feels good. Yeah. Oh, I love that game. Nice. I'm gonna update it when I get home. Maybe I'll buy the DLCs. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we are going to hop on out of here. We'll see you next week. Hopefully, Tyler will be back. If he's not, we'll I'll be sad. We'll go to him. We'll just we'll just go mobile. <laughs> That's right, baby. We're wearing masks and hazmat suits. <laughs> Tyler, what did you think about it? Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, we'll see you then. Goodbye. Goodbye.
That was a less abrupt ending than last week's. In fact, we're going long this week. 